How effective are you going to be when you fight and you're not fighting from a position of victory or position of hope? They think guys are abstaining. They're not. It's because they just can't get that access. Almost all of us were shown some form of pornography at a young age. They're going to help you manage all of this data, but it's really an access point. What was the most influential sources to the founding fathers? 34% of all the quotes they identified came out of the Bible. We have accounted for every single terrorist cell that we know that hates America have crossed over. Have they been captured? No. We're now in a war of narratives. Narratives versus the truth. For COVID, that treatment strategy came to me as an answer to prayer in a dream. 25 to 47% of all trafficking is familial. Right. Now it's the- In the US. In the US. Now it's the caregiver. So yes, let's highlight the evil. We do, but let's speak hope. Here we go. Good day, everybody. Jakob Wins here. Uh, today is going to be a show with just me because I want to focus on a topic that affects everybody. And you may think that it does not affect you, but we're going to dive into a lot of statistics today. But we're going to cover porn. And I do not want you to tune out. Do not tune out. It is, it is time for the bottom line conversation on sex trafficking. And we need to start looking at the things that are feeding it. And unless we do that, we are not going to make a dent in this in this in this issue. This is just not going to happen. We can play triage for as long as we want. We have to talk about Pornhub. We have to talk about their parent company called Manwin. I don't know that one show is enough. We'll bring in another guest and then we'll dive in deep. We'll talk with somebody who is a former porn performer. We'll bring in clinical psychologist. We're going to tackle this issue. We're not going to step away from this. The information has to get out there. But I want to paint a picture how prevalent porn is. And you could say, Yaku, I know porn is prevalent. No, you do not yet. Stay in this episode. Hang with me here. We're going to throw a ton of stuff on the screen. And we're going to talk through this. Because I want to comb through the weeds. And I want us as Americans to truly understand why we're dealing with an epidemic where children are being sold for sex. Why we're the number one nation on earth. The United States of America the number one nation on earth commercializing sex with children. How is that possible? How is it possible that the nation that claims to be the, the, the largest leading nation in Christian population is also the largest le leading nation in abortion and child sexual exploitation? And also, as we're going to see in a minute, pornography. Something is amiss. Something is very, very wrong in our culture. And it's easy just to point to the sexual revolution in 1960 and Alfred Kinsey in the 1950s, sexual experimentation. And we talk about World Health Organization, all these things. We need to dig through the data. Numbers do not lie. So let's start. We'll dive right in. I want to talk about top countries. Top countries in the world. On your screen, you see now, top countries by traffic. And this is not my opinion. This is the number one porn platform on, in the world bragging, bragging to their investors about this. The United States of America, number one country for traffic. Look at that world chart. You know, I'm from a little country called South Africa in the bottom there. And, and there's something I'm going to say about that later. It doesn't mean South Africans don't watch porn, but we don't even feature. But the U.S. and Canada, but U.S. number one, United Kingdom, and then, of course, Canada down there on the list, number one. N no... No wonder if we if porn is that prevalent in our culture, no wonder we're also the number one leading nation commercializing sex with children. And I would argue that porn is the feeder drug. It's the feeding entry drug, just like an opioid is the feeder drug into narcotics. It's the feeder drug, or maybe methamphetamines. It's the feeder drug getting you hooked to a sexually immoral lifestyle. And then it just becomes a game of how fast can it snare you and suck you down. Uh, Becca in our studio is just going to keep rolling these things through. I want to talk about a quote um, on this next slide that's going to come up. Uh, and Becca, as we go, you can just roll them. Uh, Nikki Davis. This Nikki Davis quote. Um, People are playing more video games now than ever. We talk about that. Let's bounce down. She adds, the human mind has a spectacular capacity to eroticize almost anything that we come in contact with. Enjoying video game porn also feeds into our desire of novelty. Let's just pause there. Her statement that the human mind can eroticize anything. Trust me, those who produce porn, 
The stats and the data I'm about to show you, I would argue that Pornhub has better data on the church than the church has on the church. They know the American demographics. They know their consumer worldwide, but particularly in America. They understand eroticism. They understand that if you make a child fantasize about sex, they are hooked. Be because I, I say this often, whenever they show nudity in a movie, that's a cop-out. You hint towards nudity, and the human mind will go places that you couldn't go on screen. They understand that. They're infiltrating that landscape. They're playing to the eroticism and the fa fantasy role-playing, and they say you can eroticize anything, right? Let's move on. Let's look at, at genders. We're going to look at different genders here. I want to separate genders for you. Again, this is all Pornhub. We get into other stats, but this is Pornhub stats. We argue that the most informed generation is Generation Z. We argue that that's the generation that's going to pick up the mantle and fight injustice. Okay. All right. Let's look. Gen Z, 18 through 24, because they won't report on under 18 because that's against the law. Although Pornhub does have youth watch their porn. No questions. We know. And it's free. Visitors, eight, Gen Z visitors are 77% more likely to view lesbian videos and 76% more likely to, to view hentai. What is hentai? It's anime porn. It's animation. Because in anime porn, you can be more graphic. You can be more violent. Because there's some sort of a separation between a human being and animation. So anime porn is exploding. You're going to see later how children are now eroticizing anime porn. Okay. Then we look at Generation Y. Right. 92% more likely to view the Asian category, and there's a reason for that, and so on and so on we go. But I wanted to focus on Gen Z, because the notion that Gen Z just unilaterally is the, is the, is the generation that's going to fight, I agree. They are the generation that's going to fight. But I'll tell you right now, the ultimate enemy against us, Satan himself, knows that. He is snaring Generation G, uh, uh, Z, the fighters. The ones to fight for human rights, the, fight, the ones to fight for justice, the ones to combat injustice. He's snaring them. He's, they're hamstrung with porn. They're the largest demographic viewing porn. Let's talk about uh, favorite times to watch porn. When do people watch porn? You, you may be surprised, but Sunday, Sunday, Monday through Sunday, Sunday is the number one day porn is being viewed. Uh, here's a chart. It's normally in the early hours of the morning. 10 p.m. is really when it starts. 10 p.m. through 2 a.m. And then it tapers off. Also over the lunch hour, it's called siesta porn. Actually, it has a term. It's actually a category, siesta porn. We can also watch siesta porn. People producing porn while on their lunch break. So through the lunch break. So it's downtime. A lot to be discovered there. Generation Z, super informed. Now, you had the lockdowns with COVID. They stay at home. You can also correlate that they're a generation that plays outside less. They've got less outside activities, more indoors, less sports being played by Gen Z than for us. I played seven sports growing up. They pick one sport. It's less time with coaches. It's more idle time. It's more time to fill porn. They've got screen time. We talk about what happens to the brain when you have screen time. You can't go to sleep. They don't go into REM sleep. So they're awake 10 p.m., 11, 1 a.m. in the morning. The 13-year-old, the 18-year-old, the 20-year-old is awake when mom and dad are sleeping. And all of a sudden now those are hours. Always so what goes bump in the night? Evil goes bump in the night. There's a reason that Pornhub understands how to target certain times of the day. There's a reason that Gen Z is under attack. There's a reason the correlation between less activity by Gen Zers, keeping them busy such as sport, extracurriculars, art, maybe other classes, activities, play with friends. There's a reason devices, these things, have become the pacifiers. So instead of, instead of playing football or tennis or golf or hockey or something else, now it's time on this. It's more indoor time and not outdoor time. It's more screen time so the brain never relaxes, never sleeps. They never go to REM sleep. We should talk about Dr. Pete Sulak and his studies on that. We'll get into There's a reason. Understand that Pornhub goes and they, they scrape the internet for all the data and they know their customer. Before we go on, I'm going to talk about a corporation called 
Patriot Mobile that supports us, that helps us bring this kind of stuff to you. Patriot Mobile, phenomenal organization. You find phenomenal service. They use the same towers as all the other major carriers. But here, you're just dealing with a company where your dollar, which becomes their dollar, actually gets given back to causes such as ours. They go to the border with us. They help us fight sex trafficking. They help us, help us fight to take care of the displaced community. So check out Patriot Mobile. Dial 972-PATRIOT. And when you dial that, mention the bottom line so you can get free activation. They're amazing. They put their money where their mouth is. They are conservative Christians. It's the only conservative Christian carrier. And they really care about people. All right, let's move on. Females. I want to talk females for a minute. The proportion of female visitors, male, female, in the Philippines, 52%, so more females than males. Let's drop down to the United States. 30, 33% of females, 67% of males watch porn. This is actually across all genders. Uh, sorry, uh, all, all generations. You're seeing roughly 35%, 33 to 35% of females in college, high school, so it's crossing generations now, okay? So 33%. When we go to our next slide, I want to show you searches. The kind of searches predominantly, if we can focus on females, what they focus on, you're going to see that romantic porn is one of the most popular searches by females. Hentai is number one. Why is hentai number one? Because Generation Z, they're the largest porn consumers. The young generation. Generation, not the baby boomers, not X, me, Y. Gen Z is the largest porn consumers in the world. And so hentai, which is anime porn, is their number one search term. But second is romance. That's interesting because Hollywood have convinced us that romance movies don't sell. But the number one novels read by women are romantic novels. All the bestsellers are, rom are romantic novels. We look at Fifty Shades of Grey, et cetera, et cetera, those kind of books. Generation Z, when they read, they read romantic novels. Well, oddly enough, women search for romantic porn. What does that mean? They want porn where there's romance involved. There's a storyline involved. Okay, let's pause there. What does that say about our culture? It actually speaks clearly into the culture of the lack of men romancing women, courting women being romantic, earning her hand, earning her, her trust. Women want that. It's not me saying it. Pornhub is saying it. Pornhub of all places. The church should be saying this. The church should be saying that, wait a minute. Statistics shows us that women want to nest. Women want family. Women want stability. Women want to be courted. They want to be pursued. Not an aggressive term, but in a healthy way. You can't argue it because that's what they search. So even when women watch porn, they watch romantic porn. They look for porn where there's a story. Guys are not searching romantic porn. The women are. So guys out there, if you can in some weird way learn from Pornhub, women want romance. They want roses. They want flowers. They want dates. They want picnics. They want you to court them. They want the love notes. They want, you know, the tender care. This whole notion that we've got a female society that just want to bust the glass ceiling and be so dominant and just take over from men. That's a narrative that the world is feeding you and it's not accurate. Because if it was accurate, it would show up in the data. And it's not showing up in the data. The data is showing us that they read romance. They watch romantic porn for crying out loud. They're crying out for romance. Not just that, we're going to see later, women watch lesbian porn. What's that about? You're going to see what the, 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 the scholars of the human mind say about that. Women watch lesbian porn because women want to know how they can be pleasured. How they can be taken care of. How they can be cared for. Everything we see in porn stats today show us that women actually want real men. They want men that are chivalrous. They want men that will pr protect, pursue. Men that are have character. They want story. So maybe Hollywood, you've got it wrong. The notebook is actually the kind of story women want to see. 
They want to see Ryan Gosling come in and be the romantic. That's what women want. Later on, you're also going to see that women, their favorite movie character to watch porn for is Harry Potter. Harry Potter, not Captain America. He's way down the line. Batman is way... Harry Potter for crying out loud. Why? The intellectual. It's not about being buff and being all that and coming busting the doors down and being the macho guy. It's care. We're learning so much about our culture. Now I'm going to tie it together for you. What do you think the pedophile and the predator does when he approaches your daughter on Instagram and Facebook? He comes with tender care because the pedophile, maybe more than the youth pastor, understands that her, the way to her heart is actually romance. Dads, are we rom romancing our wives in a healthy way in front of our children? Are we showing our daughters what a guy worthy of giving your heart to looks like? Because I tell you where she's seeing it in porn. She's watching it in porn. She's watching some creep dude abuse a woman on camera. And that's how hungry she is for romance. Not my data, man. Pornhub's data. All right, let's dive into this. This is another breakdown on the generations. Just to give you a snapshot, categories by generation researched, okay? Gen Z, number one researched lesbian. It's about the female getting attention. The female getting attention. We go to the other generations, generation Y, Asian. You don't even see lesbian in that category. Go to Gen X. Cartoon, interracial, threesome, ebony, Japanese. You don't even see lesbian in Gen X. You don't see lesbian in the baby boomers. We have to ask ourselves why. Oh, yeah, it's just because all of a sudden gender fluidity and you're trying transgender. No, this is not transgender. The search doesn't say transgender. The search doesn't say LBGTQY, whatever, right? It says lesbian viewed by women. Why? They want attention. We, we can learn from this. We can also now point towards pedophiles and predators that predominantly traffic women. 95% of sex trafficking victims are women. Sure, there's men, 5%. Most sexual abuse cases, 90%. Women. The predators understand the way to a woman's heart. The guy that's the predator on college campus he knows better than a college quarterback how to earn a girl's trust and her heart so that he can take her and so that he can perform date rape. But he's going to earn her trust because we also know that the fastest form of trafficking is familial trafficking. The fastest form of sexual abuse is by a familial figure, someone that the child or the man or the boy or the girl or the woman knew. This, 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 you want to talk science? This is data, actual data. I'm going to move on. Um, I'm going to go to another quote real quick. Um, we're going to go to this quote. This sex educator, Luna Matatus, says fantasy. Oh, hold on one second. I think we'll get it back. We'll get it back in a second. Hold on. Hold on, folks. Fantasies are a big part of why we go to porn. Our fantasies can't be understood through any single data point. They're often a complex manifestation of a bunch of different parts of us. The allure of straight guy porn for gay men sometimes is about fantasizing about conventional masculinity. Wait a minute. Okay, you're telling me that straight guys watch gay porn because they actually want to go back to the conventional masculinity of Mono e mano, strength versus strength, dominance. Okay, so what I'm reading here is those who produce porn understand how to tap into male dominance. And they're going to play to it to bring a stimulus to the guy's brain to go, this is going to make you feel alpha. So it's not even about gay porn, gay sex. It's about feeling alpha. It's about identifying the dominant one. This is very disturbing, but fascinating data when we now look at sexual abuse and sex trafficking to understand the predator, to understand the pedophile, okay? I want to jump to visitor demographics um, here real quick. By age, again, there's a pie chart for you. 
the United States, 23% is Gen Z, 26% um, is that still mil Gen Z millennial crossover. And then as we see, as they get older, baby boomers, of course, and it, and it drops off 65 plus. So the baby boomers are only 10%. Well, you could say, well, baby boomers, maybe they have less sex. You would argue that men who have less sex later in their life would probably watch more porn. But the data doesn't show that. Because I'm telling you what that data is pointing to. It's upbringing. It's, it's how the formative years in these generations took place. It's what they did between the age of 8 and 18. It's how they interacted, where they got stimuli from, how they're stimulated. It wasn't all about sex. We said that back then. Oh, men are all about sex. Oh, no, they were not. Today's guys are all about sex. Today's guys are all about satisfy me, stimulate me, my pronouns, address me this way, change the whole world for me. It's the most selfish culture maybe in the history of the earth. But it wasn't. We thought the baby boomers were all about sex, but the data tells us it's not the case. Otherwise, they would disproportionately watch more porn because guys in their 50s and 60s get less sex per week, per month. So wouldn't they watch more porn? But it's not the case. They were raised differently. There's different priorities in their lives. We have a massive problem in our younger generations based on how we raise them. What we allow them to partake in. And sure, of course, I understand this makes porn more available. But the baby boomers today have a cell phone. They've got access. They didn't when they were young. And that's my point. Because they didn't have this when they were young. Because they were, they were busy with other things. They were playing in the dirt. They were riding their bikes. They were, they were you know, going on conquest. They were conquering things. Sex was not in their frontal lobe 24 hours a day. Because we encourage our children to be pacified by this. To sit idly on the way. Lock them down through COVID. Take them out of sport. One sport. Dads, let your children play as many sports as possible. They will naturally, close to their 18th birthday, pick one. But you want them to interact with human beings. You want them in team sport, solo sport. You want them to lose. Yes, you heard it here. I want your children to lose. I want them to win. But you learn a lot more from your losses than your victories. And if you don't learn to lose, not that you want to tolerate losing, but you learn from it. So you expose them to team sport, solo sport. You want them to lose to where they can't blame anybody. You lose a tennis match, it's on you, man. You lose in track, there's no one to blame. You lose in football, I can blame the quarterback, the coach, the play calling. They need all of it. We need to get back to letting our children engage with human beings in real life. Not on this thing. Because they're being raised with sex as a concept in their frontal lobe. We know what comprehensive sex ed is doing in the classroom. It's normalizing and desensitizing them to sex, which is only going to drive them to more hardcore and hardcore sex. I want to jump to most viewed categories by gender. Let's just look at this real quick. This is so telling, guys. So telling. And I, I, I only have so much time, and I've, I've digested hundreds of pages of, of statistics. But let's look at Men and women. This is worldwide, okay? Men, Japanese. Women, lesbian. I mean, on and on and on. And it's not that women want to be lesbian. The, 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 the psychiatrists speak about that in the study. It's not that. It's about they want to see a woman get care, get taken care of, where the woman is the focus with the women, and we understand this in sex, we understand women take time, men do not. Women need, it's about time, we invest time, and it's not all about sex, but into the woman's heart, in her care, because it's not about just sexual, you know, stimulation. It's about the care a woman needs. I would argue that these women would say they'd probably take a very rich date, rich meaning filled with real emotion, real attention, content, conversation, intellectual stimulus, they probably take that over sex. If I understand the statistics coming from romance novels, it's not the sex act. It's the care. The data is just showing it. Okay. 
then then funny enough, and, and look, I'm just going to be real with you. Why do we see threesomes ranking so high in women, but lower in men? Because I guarantee you, you probably thought, well, men want threesomes. Women want it more. They don't physically want to engage in it. Why? Because it's more attention. Two guys, one girl, as sick as it is. And look, all this is twisted. All this is sexual immorality. I endorse none of it. Zero. It's destructive. Porn destroys. Porn kills. But we can learn from this data. Women watch threesomes. Two guys, one woman, more than men. Why? They want the women to be the focus. They want, and this is not me saying it. This is psychiatrists, sex therapists saying this. It's not that that woman watching that wants to go engage in a threesome. It is an outward manifestation of an inward desire, a fantasy, the fantasy of being romance, the fantasy of being the center of attention. Now, I'm not talking about the Barbie doll syndrome where women, you, you're just, you're always right and you can't do no wrong and men just need to drop the whole universe and just dote on you. I'm not, ta I'm talking about in a healthy manner, but the stats show us that we're seeing it. Okay. I don't even want to go into the rest because it's so freaking heinous. I just don't want to get into it. We'll go. We'll, we'll move on. Oh, no, we're not done. We're not done. We're going to do this. We're going to identify the core indicators in our culture, why we are actually a culture that's embraced sexual immorality and we're falling off the cliff. And you're going to see later our children are the ones paying the ultimate price. You may be doing something, but you have no idea what it sets our culture up and the failure and the things that it allows culture to do to children. This is most view categories. Uh, yeah, let's skip this one. We've gone through this one. It's just going to tell us more of the same. I threw that in there. I want to talk about um, U.S. categories that's going to come up. I want to be particular to the U.S. and then time spent on these things. This is the U.S. Hentai because we're the number one. Again, lesbian because women so much. And then if we look at categories here, there's, there's top particular porn stars. Not that I want to give these people any... Um, any attention, okay? But I just want you to see the type of data. We can move off that slide. Thanks, Becca. The type, and move on to time. The type of data that Pornhub holds. And why is this important to me? Our children are fighting a an eight-headed dragon called porn, and they have no chance. They have no chance. Pornhub knows our children better than they know themselves. They go on the internet. They scrape the internet, legal or illegal, I argue illegally. And it's so hard to go after Pornhub. In another episode, we're going to break down their corporate structure that they are in a domicile where we have no jurisdiction. They're owned by a company called Manwin. Pornhub is a Canadian company. Manwin is offshore in a country where we have no legal right. They've got hundreds of thousands of what's called tube sites. So you shut one down, the other one pops up. They have infiltrated uh, OnlyFans. OnlyFans now recruit on college campuses, telling college students that, hey, this is a way to pay off college debt. Come on. Come on. You're going to love it when, when you show your dad that Rolls Royce. Yeah, like a father is going to be proud of his daughter because she's selling her body for sex, but she drives a Rolls Royce. This is happening on college campuses by fans only. It's a whole different episode we're going to do. We're going to expose them. It's disgusting. But here... I want you to see the amount of time spent on porn. They have data, they being Pornhub, on our children that we don't have on our children, which means they can approach our children with the right messaging. I want you to understand this. Pornhub feeds information to those who create the porn. So if Pornhub wants to speak to 15-year-old boys or to their defense, they would say, we don't show porn to minors. Nonsense. They've got free porn all over the internet, on Twitter, okay, on YouTube. But let's, let, let's for argument, say, say it's 18-year-old boy. They want to target an 18-year-old boy. They're going to scrape the internet. They're going to know what games he plays. They're going to know if he's a soccer player or lacrosse player or football player. They're going to know what movies he likes. 
I'm going to show you that. They're going to know whether he's a Christian or not. They're going to know if he's engaged or not. Does he have a father or not? Is he the oldest? Is he the middle sibling? Is he the youngest? They've got metadata on that child, and they're now going to message the type of porn to him that will most likely get him hooked based on his search history, based on what he does, his likes, his dislikes. Well, what does that mean? If he's a fitness guy, do you know that one of the fastest growing forms of porn viewed is fitness porn? Porn made in a gym. So the guy who's 18, who's really getting buff and he's spending a lot of time in the gym, he sees a lot of girls in their tights, he's looking at their backsides, Pornhub knows that about him. They're going to feed him gym porn. He has no chance. He doesn't even know that he is predisposed to it. He's just living life, working out, liking girls, hormones through the roof. Pornhub, though, they monitor him. They scrape. They know him very well. And they feed him the right drug, not just porn. Those days are over. It is super specific, even into the Christian community. Pornhub has statistics on the church, on Christians viewing porn. What type of porn? There's even compassionate porn. People like to do outreach in homeless communities, and they find out that the people have some dopamine effect by helping the homeless. Some of those folks view homeless porn. We don't have the stats on our own demographics like they do. They are ruthless in tailoring the drug to the specific individual on the platform of their choice. So how does that work? They call some of the porn creators. They feed them the data and they tell Susie who makes porn, Susie, you are the foot fetish porn creator. People love your foot fetish porn. And they feed her data on what types of porn to create because they'll sell more of it. She'll earn more. They outpace Facebook or any other data analytics company with data as they feed data to the creators of the porn. And they categorize it very meticulously. And they target children, although they say they don't, they do. They do because they know children see it. They may not intentionally push it to the 13-year-old. They push it to the 18-year-old, the 19-year-old, but so much of it is free. So let's look at the time here. Philippines, I showed you the Philippines disproportionately is the highest category where women, 52% of women watch porn. They spend 11 minutes and 31 seconds per session. Okay, we go down to the United States, 9 minutes and 44 seconds per session. I don't know that we can even say in church how much how, how much time does the youth pay attention per session. Pornhub knows. They know. They know per generation, per category, per gender, per ethnic ethnic group. They know particularly the time spent. The change in seconds, they say, is due to bandwidth and streaming. And they even go down into saying in areas where we have a bandwidth issue, we're going to lo lose one second. They're counting seconds, people. Pornhub is so intentional at destroying your life. And porn destroys. It is the, my mom says this, it's the most jealous lover of all. Second, alcohol. It'll take everything. It'll take your family. It'll take your job. It'll take your marriage. It'll take your dignity. It'll take your pride. It'll take your vision, your talent. It'll hyper-focus you on sex. It'll make you selfish. It destroys. It destroys the one doing it, the one viewing it, the one performing it, the one filming it, the one selling it. There's nobody in the porn cycle that does not get destroyed in the process. Because it's sexual immorality. I know this is a heavy show. Deal with it. Respectfully. Suck it up. Look at the facts. Let's, ha let's have some self-awareness here. And see that we are contributing to a monster. I'm going to end the show later by showing you our children are the ones suffering. This is what happened through the Super Bowl. This is where I want to make my case. This is how porn declines on a Sunday during the Super Bowl. 
Okay? This is the impact of a globally highly viewed event. So Yaku will obviously, duh, no. What this tells you is if time can get occupied with something more productive, you will watch less porn. It makes the argument that our children should be busier, more extracurriculars, sign up for piano class, do something else, occupy their time, shut down screen time at 7.30 at night at the latest for young ones at 5 p.m. so the brain can calm, the brain can settle. Dr. Pete Sulak will say you can return to homeostasis. You're not in a stress response so that when they go to sleep, they actually go to sleep at 10 p.m. at the latest for, for high schoolers, 7.30 for, you know, for young ones, and the brain is calm enough to shut down, to go into REM sleep, and we can combat this thing by combating the dark hours, by taking their time, by consuming their time with physical activity, exertion. Yeah, you got to sweat a little bit again. You got to get exhausted again. Young people today, they go, I'm so tired, I'm exhausted. I mean, you don't know exhaustion, man. Talk to the guys who've been through the military. Talk to three a days in football. We need to get exhausted again so our body burns energy again. So the body's activated again. So the dopamine comes from exercise and not porn and sex. So sex is not in the front of the lobe, but it's in the back of the mind. This is what needs to happen. This is what this shows you. Look at the decline and then the immediate ramp up again. So Super Bowl, kind of the ramp up, the barbecue hour, 3.30 and on through about 10 p.m. And boom, it spikes again. It just shows you that events. We can go to the next slide. It's also going to show you Eurovision. It's kind of like American Idol. It's a big song contest. And this is the, the, the night of, of Eurovision, the finale. Okay. The decline. So during, during Eurovision, in the hours that it played, Malta, minus 30% in porn. Norway, minus 17% in porn. Go down to Israel, 1%. Sweden, minus 1%. United Kingdom, minus 9%. All this shows you is that if there's something else to do that is more productive, well, you'll say, well, Yaku, obviously, if I'm busy with something, no, but I could argue that people should say, well, forget about the Super Bowl. I'm going to watch porn. I could argue that. I could argue that we'd say poor numbers should go up during the Super Bowl. Forget about the Super Bowl. No, it shows you there's still human points of interest more important than sex. Sex is not the most important thing in our lives. We are making it the most important thing in our lives. We're making it the thing that Gen Zers and, and, and the younger generations think of when they wake up all the way through when they go to bed. But if there is something, a singing contest, an exercise, a class, the Super Bowl, if there's something where you engage with human beings, you will get stimulus. You will get the dopamine effects, the heart racing. You will get engagement. And my point is more engagement with human beings in reality, less idle time, more exertion over time. We know the body forms a habit in 21 days. And sex, the need for self-satisfaction and stimulation, will move from the frontal lobe to another area in the brain, and you won't live for orgasm. Bottom line. Because that's destructive. Because it consumes all your energy. It sucks your creativity out of you. It sucks the product. Every employer should be anti-porn. You want, to, you want to be an employer? I can take you back to that slide about siesta porn. You want to be an employer? Go pull your own statistics and see. Oh, my people aren't that productive at 3.30 in the afternoon. Okay? Maybe because they're consuming all their energy in porn in their siesta hour. Maybe if you stimulate them through the siesta hour with another activity. Oh, that's right. You have ping pong tables at Google. Oh, that's right. You got foosball tables at Facebook. Oh, that's right. They only do a brainstorming session for an hour and then they go play a game. Why? Because it produces productivity. Porn does the opposite. It sucks the life out of you. It sucks the energy out of you. This is not rocket science. Pornhub just understands it better than the rest of the world because they actually pay attention. They want to sell to the customer. 
And yes, they want the customer so hooked that they could be destroyed and they want to sell them that it's entertainment. It's not entertainment. It's an absolute onslaught and a destruction. Let's talk uh, times per state inside the United States. Wyoming, 11 minutes. Okay. You think there's a lot to do in Wyoming? No? All right. It correlates, people. It correlates. Idle time. Okay. Let's go down to Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana, South Carolina. No major city there. Why? Slower lifestyle, slower pace. Major city, got to go, 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 go. Not as much idle time. Physically moving. LA, you, you move in LA. You take one meeting, it's a 30-minute drive. The next meeting is an hour and 40-minute drive. You're still in the same city. Dallas, Texas, we drive. We move. You're always on the move. You're on the go. Less idle time. Colorado, California, Utah. And you say, well, okay, it's not a big difference. Nine minutes and 24 seconds in California to 11 minutes and three seconds. It's almost a two-minute difference. Two-minute difference per day over a year. Oh, that adds up. Oh, that adds up. You're going to get your life back. I'm about to give men thousands of hours of their lives back to go do something productive. Go start a new company. Give up porn and I give you time to start a new business. And you're telling people you don't have time. Just give up porn and build a relationship with your children. How about you give up porn and you get your wife to give up porn and you take your combined time and you romance her. And now she doesn't watch lesbian porn and read romance novels. She's getting that satisfaction, stimulation, intellectual stimulation, emotional stimulation from her husband. How about you invest it there? That's an investment in your marriage, in my marriage, just to get real with you. Let's learn from the data, the actual data. Here comes the big, big sledgehammer that's about to hit us in the face. Gaming consoles. We know that the number one way to make money today in entertainment is gaming. Way above music and movies. Way above. I mean, it, it dwarfs movies and music. Online gaming, playing in live rooms, we know is one of the fastest growing forms where children, boys particularly, are being trafficked, are being groomed by predators. Okay. So I would say, hey, PlayStation, what are you doing about that? Xbox, what are you doing about that? Because check out this pie chart. PlayStation is the number one gaming console used to view porn. So the kid views porn on PlayStation. The next minute, he's playing a live game with some predators, some pedophiles. They're having a conversation with him. They're grooming him, but not hard work. Don't worry, because he just watched porn. It's just a cesspool. Do I hate gaming? No. But I just want to show you what's happening. I'm not a gamer. But I definitely don't want gaming consoles to be used to traffic children, to abuse people, to watch porn. Again, there's the stats. Nintendo is the smallest because I think just not a lot of people play Nintendo. But Xbox, PlayStation. Again, real data, not my data. Pornhub's data. Pornhub knows, hey, we got to market through PlayStation. And then they know who's on PlayStation. And they know what kind of games they play. Oh, you think I don't know? You think they don't know? Let's move on. Let's go to the next slide. Show you how intentional they are. The next slide I'm going to show you is video game characters. So what is this slide? This is a slide of the character's research in regards to wanting to watch character porn by gamers. Yep. So here we go. Fortnite. Fortnite characters in porn. So now you have Pornhub instruct data to porn producers saying, hey, cosplay, Fortnite, dress like Fortnite characters because all the Fortnite gamers are going to watch Fortnite porn. They're going to research Fortnite porn. They're going to research Minecraft porn, Overwatch, Pokemon porn, Brawl Stars porn. This is real. We're going to move on. Have you vomited yet? Because I know you watch porn. But you didn't know this. You didn't know that they know you intimately. And you're being conned. You're being played. You're being played. 
You're being played for a dollar, for, for a dollar or for a euro, or for a yen or whatever it is. You're being played. They're extracting money out of you. They're extracting data out of you. They've built a case profile around you. They push certain porn to you based on your likes and dislikes. And in the process, whether today you realize it or not, you're being destroyed. That's what this whole show is about. Is me caring for every single viewer saying, come on, take your life back. Get your time back. Invest into a real relationship that's going to give you real interest, real value. You know that going and self-stimulate after porn is cheap. It's artificial. It does not satisfy. You need more and more because it, because it satisfies neurotransmitters in your genitals only. It, yes, it triggers the brain, but it doesn't satisfy your heart. It doesn't build community. It doesn't give you a life mate. It doesn't give you someone to grow old with. It doesn't give you deep relationships and trust. It's not mutual. It's one directional. It's cheap. It's fake. It's a fraud. And my cry to you is you can't lose your life to something like this because you're trapped in a spiral. And I invite you to come to our site this is not an anti-porn site. This is a site to restore our lives. We fight human trafficking. I'm just telling you it's impossible to fight human trafficking and child sexual exploitation without fighting this thing. Because the pimps use porn to get the girls hooked, to get them completely discombobulated, to train them what to do. This slide talks about devices. And I think the obvious, you might say, well, that's obvious. It's it's. It's phones, then desktops, and then, and then tablets. It just supports my point. It's on the go. Guys are watching porn sitting in church. Guys are watching porn sitting in board meetings because they're hooked. They're hooked on the drug, and they don't need a needle. They don't need a dealer. They don't need to know somebody in the dark crevices of your city. Sit in the boardroom, pull up a little bit of cheap porn on YouTube, quick hit, a quick fix, like a little snort of cocaine, little powder on the nose, off you go, little quick stimulus, and it's cheap. It's stealing from you. It's corrupting your soul. It is. And I don't want that for you. I want you to have rich relationships, deep, emotional, intimate, intellectual relationships that matter, where you give, you serve, Nothing will stimulate you more in life than serving another human being's needs, not their sexual needs, serving them as a person, elevating them as a person. Gang raping a woman in a porn video is not serving that woman, okay? Even if you pay her a million dollars per session, you're degrading her, you're stealing from her, you're robbing from her, you're robbing from every view. You're degrading the human race when you produce porn. And I'm sorry if that's heavy for you. But this is just where the jig drops. We have to take responsibility with the things we do. We can't just say, it's just entertainment. I make porn. They watch me at fans only. Nobody else gets it. I was on a, on a show recently with, a porn, with a, a porn actress. And she goes, I'm fans only. It's all behind a paywall. And then she was asked the question, can you guarantee us that none of your porn by those who sell it are given away free? Well, no, I'm sure some is given away free. Of course it is. And it's given free to children. Or it's made accessible to children. This stat, the operating systems, Android and Apple, oh, of course, Yaku, those are the two big ones. We'll just move on. We'll look at browsers and here's the browsers, Chrome, Safari. And why am I showing you this? Why is this relevant? I want to show you the detail that the porn industry goes into to target their market. They understand it. Wouldn't you as a small business owner love this, these analytics? Weren't you upset when Facebook canceled Facebook analytics and said, we're no longer going to give you analytics? Wouldn't you love to? I can go on for hours on the detail they have. 
on their consumer or on a potential customer. Okay. Speaks for itself. Um, yeah. Chrome and Safari, most popular search engines, but that's what's being used. It's not the dark web. Come on. It's not 4chan and 8chan. It's YouTube. It's Instagram. It's TikTok. It's free. And yeah, of course, you can pay as well. Oh, they make you pay. Trust me. This stat, holiday season just shows that traffic goes down in holiday seasons. Why? Oh, that's right. Engagement with real people. Real interaction. Real emotional memories. Core memories. That's something underreported in our culture today. Core memories. When last did you make a core memory? Because watching... Watching Lana, the number one porn star in the world, as if that's to be celebrated. Watching Lana Rhodes, okay, perform sex is not a core memory. You forget about Lana when you watch the next girl and the next girl and you're liking the 200 girls in a row on Instagram. And the girl thinks she's special because you liked her, but she doesn't know you just liked a thousand other girls. It's not about her. Nothing is personal. It's not intimate. It's not personal. It devalues. It doesn't build value. Okay, I want to jump away from their stats and go into a couple of other things. Um, I want to jump into some stats about sexual abuse and the results of this. What actually happens? Um, Covenant Eyes. If you do not have Covenant Eyes, they don't support the show. They're not a, a, they're not an, a sponsor of the show. But put Covenant Eyes on your children's phones. To where you, you can censor and protect them. Covenant Eyes also pulls a lot of statistics. They are amazing. I want to read something to you. Alarming sexual violence statistics. Okay. One of the most shocking facts about sexual assault is that approximately 5% of sexual assault reports filed have been proven false. Okay. 82% of all juvenile sexual assault victims are female. 90% of adult rape victims are female. 41% of sexual assaults against Native Indians are committed by a stranger. And adolescents age 14 through 17 were by far the most likely. Let's say this again. 14 through 17-year-olds are the most likely to be sexually victimized in our culture today. I've told you before, the average age of a sex trafficking victim is 12. Forget about just sex trafficking. Let's just talk about date rape, sexual abuse by a parent. The most likely age bracket in our culture in America to be sexually violated, 14 through 17-year-olds. If that does not make your blood boil, if that does not say to you, okay, maybe you were pro-porn before this video. But, but the results speak for themselves. We have bastardized the morality of our culture. It's an anti-God movement. Do you know that um, Arizona State University did a study on, on Christians saying, what are the two most likely things that they would not uphold according to the Word of God? And the one was that the Bible is the absolute truth. Well, if the Bible is not the absolute truth, you're not a Christian. I'm sorry to break it to you. Your pastor's lying to you. The Bible is the absolute truth. And the second thing that they said they are least likely to uphold is sexual immorality according to the Word of God. Let's pull some of that up. Okay, before we go, I want to go to darkness to light real quick. I'm going to show you a couple more stats. 90% of sexual abuse victims know their abuser. This is not the pimp in the mink coat. This is not kidnapping. I tell you all the time, familial trafficking. Even sexual abuse, rape is familial. Just keep them rolling, Becca. We'll just keep going. We might as well. We've got about a minute left here. I want to wrap this thing strong. Here's another st stat from darkness to light. One in 10 children will be sexually abused before age 18. One in 10. Millions. Millions. Okay? 60% of all sexual abuse victims, including children, never tell anybody. Good luck with that rehab and restoration as we see in trafficking and a sexually abused child is a soft target for a predator they're almost 100 percent more likely to fall into trafficking than any child that was not sexually abused more from darkness to light of children who are sexually abused 20 percent of are abused 
This is where you should throw tables over. This is Jesus walking in and making a whip and beating the living snot out of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Listen to this stat. 20% are, of children are abused before the age of eight. We're talking about a porn culture that's normalizing sex with anybody in any way, bestiality, the whole deal, and they're raping babies. What's it going to take for me and you to stand up and go, this stops with us? That we, heck, we're launching a whole campaign. It stops with you. It stops with me. It stops with us. It will not stop itself because Pornhub goes, oh, we know the data, baby. We're about to what, wait for 2022 report. Wait till we show our investors then what we did. It is satanic. It's demonic. It's destructive. Covenant Eyes says um, 1.4 billion virtual reality video market, 1.23 billion VFR NFL related content. A billion of it in VR is VR porn. I told you, watch out. The metaverse is going to destroy lives with sex. 1.4 billion of it. Here we go. The Washington Post. One in 25 Americans has faced or been threatened with revenge porn. Now when the girl won't give the guy sex, he coerces her into sex. He films it illegally and it becomes a porn video. Call your daughters. Call your sons. I want to give you some scripture to close this out. Yes, I'm going to give you scripture. Somewhere we better get back to a baseline. Somewhere we got to establish some, some, some foundation. Dear God, can we please get the fear of God again? Dear God, may we, may we survive this Sodom and Gomorrah we're living under. It it's, it's blows my mind only by the grace of God that we haven't been wiped off the face of the earth yet. Because if Sodom and Gomorrah was worse than this, then the, I understand why he wiped them all off. So here's some root for you. Maybe you're not a Christian. Just listen. Just hear if this makes sense. As far as establishing some balance again in society. 1 Corinthians 6.10 Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin, it, sin a person commits is outside of the body. But the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. People go, I'm not hurting anybody. You're hurting you. You're destroying your own life. Yaku, I'm not touching children. I'm just watching child porn. One, you're creating demand for more children to be thrown into it, but you're destroying you. This is where the self-awareness switch should go on. I'll grab another one. Matthew 5, 28. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery. Why? Because God is saying to you, listen, catch the smoke before there's fire. Even if you look in a lustful way, catch yourself. Occupy your time. Invest in a real relationship. Because he knows you're going to get snared. And you're going to fall down Pandora's box. I'm going to close with this. I know this was, look, hey man. It's called the bottom line because we're going to get to that. We have embraced a culture and we are normalizing a culture where we want to live to be satisfied ourselves, whether that is by eating, by entertainment, by your relationships, by how you treat your friends. It's me, 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 me. Cater to me. Serve me. Stimulate me. Give me sexual stimulation. It's me, me, me. It's time that we serve other people. It's time that we turn again and understand that we are here to help other people heal. People are broken. People are lost. People are destitute. People need help. People need to be elevated. You, can, you have so much to give. Porn feeds into the me movement. Break free from that. Get help, please. I beg you, for your own sake, get help. I want you to be set free. And yes, I want you to help me fight against sex trafficking, which you can't. And I can't if we are part of the problem feeding the beast because supply meets demand. Please go to our website. 
yakuboinsministries.org. Join us in this fight. If you need help, reach out to us. We'll send you resources. There is help. Parents, put covenant eyes on your children's phones. Get them enrolled in classes. Occupy their time. Heck, make Johnny run around the house 100 times every afternoon so you can pass out at 7 o'clock and go to sleep. Get a purpose. Build real relationships. Because this thing is ripping us apart. God bless you. I don't know what you're going to call that show, but <laughs> it is like. I'm going to call it. That one was in the hot box. Good. Right. Yeah. I got to get.